and we often order several little side dishes and we share them. It's a fantastic restaurant here in Kingston. If you've never been, it's really worth checking out. I believe that what we had ordered was the beet and kale salad. The thing for me that was so super interesting was the topping. I'm very curious about food, that's very obvious. And what I did was I looked at it and I tried to figure out what exactly was the topping made out of. I couldn't determine it. I knew that there was some kind of nuts in it, but I didn't know what else was giving it that crunch and it wasn't anything like croutons. So I asked the person waiting, the wait person, and she said she wasn't sure what the topping was either. So she went back into the kitchen and spoke with the chef. And when she came back, I was so excited because she briefly told me and explained to me not only what was in the topping, but how it was made and it's so simple and I'd forgotten about this until just recently when I was cooking up some quinoa. Now it took me a couple times to try this myself so now I'm telling you the big secret. It's very simple. What it is is it's quinoa and walnuts together. So what I have done is, first of all, I have some quinoa and it's cooked already. And that's how this recipe starts. But the thing you have to remember the most is you only halfway cook the quinoa. So quinoa usually cooks for about, oh, 12, 15 minutes. So what you do is you cook it for, say, six, seven minutes, tops. Because what you want is you want the quinoa to remain firm, not to get really fluffy and pearl-like. So you can see that the quinoa is still very firm and that's the most important part of the recipe. The other thing I did was I used already my mini food chopper that you've seen already many times. I decided to do it ahead of time because it's really quite loud and then we have to do the happy dance while it's it's grinding and so this is how much I ground the walnuts so they're smaller than what you would buy if you bought just chopped walnuts but they're not ground so they're about half the size of say a pea. Actually, if we really thought about this, it's almost slightly bigger than the quinoa when it's all intact. And or maybe even twice the size. So you might you might want to play with it. But the fact is that you don't want it ground and you don't want it chopped. You want it somewhere in between. And it's smaller, maybe half the size of a pea is the best way to explain the size. Now, this is the secret. What we do is we put in a nonstick frying pan, we put a little bit of oil. I'm actually going to measure it. I don't always measure it, but I'm going to put maybe, oh, that looks good, a tablespoon. A tablespoon of oil. I like to use a nonstick frying pan. And then you're going to see, it's, it's almost like popcorn. I can take it off the heat for a minute. There we go. And then what we do is we scoop into the frying pan some of the quinoa. Now remember, this is going to be topping. So if there's extra, what you can do is you can always keep it in like a jar. I would just plan to lightly cover the bottom of a nonstick frying pan, just like that. Just cover it lightly. You don't want it to be overfilled. It's going to brown really quickly. And then what I do is I'm going to add the nuts relatively quickly because they both brown 
very fast. And probably equal amounts, almost, of the nuts to the quinoa. Maybe a little bit more quinoa. But a lot of nuts also, almost as much, maybe three quarters as much. Now I know normally I give you more precise measurement. Um, I would say probably three quarters of a cup of quinoa and maybe half a cup of the, ch of the, the chopped nuts. And then all we do is just like, remember how we toasted the coconut last week? how fast it browned, you have to be um, on top of it. You don't want to, I'm cooking this on about medium to medium low heat. And what you're going to do is you're going to cook it, you're going to see the quinoa is going to turn a little bit uh, golden brown. And it's very, very exciting because the whole recipe becomes crunchy. And then we can use that as a topping. And it's so versatile and it's so high in protein because quinoa, even though it's a grain, it's the only grain that's a complete protein. So you can think about it the same way you would think about chicken or fish because when you're having quinoa with your meal, it's very high quality protein. So you don't have to worry about having any other alternative. It's a fantastic high protein, complete protein, plant-based alternative. Very, very versatile because with this we can use it as a topping say in the top of a salad which is how it was served to me and you could also put it on top of casseroles. You know how at the top of a casserole you would have uh, bread crumbs maybe a pasta casserole um, and even though quinoa is pasta basically it's a grain um, it'd be really good even on top of a stir fry it's so fantastic but what happens when you cook the kiwi on, or the quinoa only halfway it stays firm and that is the most important part and then when you are browning it it remains very firm, becomes crunchy, and with the walnuts, anytime you do heat walnuts like that, almonds, walnuts, and toast them, it really brings the flavor out. And then the quinoa almost takes on the flavor of the nuts, the walnuts. Walnuts are so brilliant too. Really high in the omega-3s really healthy fats. So there we go. I'm going to let this brown for another minute or so. I can already see the difference. It becomes a golden brown. You can see the difference in the color. It's so, so lovely. The other protein that I wanted to talk to you about that we don't think about very often at all is edamame. And edamame is very close to the texture and the size and an appearance like lima beans. But the thing about edamame is they're very, very high in protein. So again, another plant-based protein alternative. And we often have edamame frozen at the grocery store. This is a President's Choice product. Uh, a lot of people do prefer it to be more organic and often I think if you're buying it organic you will find it in the shell, sold in the shell. I like it when it's shelled already. It's so convenient. And so what I've done is it only takes three, five minutes to cook it up and it's very versatile. You could throw it in a stir fry. It'd be fantastic um, to raise the protein level. And I have some here. So you can see what they look like. They're already cooked. They're really delicious. Again, look for them shelled. 
I wanted to tell you that one of the ideas that I always have is to start out just with a bowl of greens as my base. And the other thing we've talked about before is the roasted vegetables. One thing we don't think of very often is when you have leftover roasted vegetables and they're cold, it's so lovely to experience the roasted cold vegetables with your salad greens. It's a really great mixture of the textures. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, including some, I have uh, sweet potatoes, I have orange peppers, red peppers, asparagus, roasted tomatoes, and all in here, roasted mushrooms. So I always do a whole cookie sheet full, at least once a week. Then what I can do is I can take the leftover roasted vegetables and I can put them in the fridge. I love especially with the asparagus. Whenever I get asparagus, I cook it all at once. And it's really fantastic uh, cold once it's cooked. We don't think about that often either. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my roasted vegetables right here, right on top of my salad greens, which are mixed greens. Oh, with the asparagus, fantastic. And the red peppers, the mushrooms. This is where the edamame comes in handy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my salad greens, I'm just going to sprinkle on top a couple good tablespoons of edamame right on top. That's fantastic. Look at that. Isn't that great? Delish. Then, this is very, very good. Oh, absolutely ready. Absolutely. I can turn my oven off. I'm going to show this to you. So you can see how it's golden brown. Isn't that great? Non-stick frying pan. That's a good tip. And when you use a non-stick frying pan, you don't need a lot of oil. But in this case, I would use a little bit of olive oil versus using a Pam spray. And then all I do is take a little bit of this topping, sprinkle it on top. Oh my goodness, I can smell it. The toasted walnuts are just amazing. Look at that. Oh, it smells so wonderful. So not only now do we have the edamame, we also have the quinoa and walnut topping. Drizzle just a little bit of olive oil or maybe a balsamic and olive oil. Perfect. Look at that. I might be a little bit inspired by the spring coming, but totally a complete meal. The other thing you could do is, you could take the roasted vegetables, you could put a handful of the salad greens, you could lay a wrap out, like a, a flour wrap or a corn wrap or a sun-dried tomato wrap. You could put it all not with all the greens, but a handful of the greens, the roasted vegetables. You could put a little bit of this topping in there. Um, and then you could wrap it up and you could make it into a wrap also. So a lot of different options and very healthy, high in protein, very nutritious. Isn't that fantastic? I love it. I also want to say March is Nutrition Month, so Happy Nutrition Month, everybody. Signing out. See you next week. Bye.